What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Nice, short, sweet one today. Just a car that I want to show off to you guys. So this here belongs to a pretty good mate of mine, Cody. It's a factory turbo manual Supra, and it's uh, got some goodies. It's very, very nice, very clean. Beautiful red interior. Very nice car. So we got some nice big Workmaster S13 piece uh, that were sort of custom built. Cody got them built by work uh, in these colors with the bronze, bronze lips. They have very, very nice looking wheels, gold hardware, nice big brakes. Uh, it's a factory turbo manual. So we've got the factory V161 six speed manual. Um, so yeah, very, very nice car. As you can see, red leather, beautiful, beautiful car. So Cody's owned this car quite a while. You actually may remember it for those of you who've been on the channel for like a really, really long time. When we actually took Liam's $500 R31 project to skid control Gimpy, the wet skid pan day, Cody actually joined us in this car. Back then, it had all uh, pie cut fab work done by Ryan there at Elite uh, Fabrications. Uh, beautiful, beautiful fab work, uh, but had like a, a big aftermarket intake uh, plenum, had a Garrett GT3582, uh, with I'm pretty sure it was like a T4 uh, 106 or something, like a really big housing. So, you know, it was built for big power, but um, it was, you know, a big power car uh, is pretty much what it was. You know, it, it behaved like a big power car. Um, you know, didn't didn't make a lot of power low on the RPM, that sort of thing. Cody sort of decided to change direction with the car. He ended up going back to a stock plenum, back to a stock plenum, trying to pick up that little bit more down low, uh, you know, have a nice bit more of a, an even power curve sort of thing going on. So we're going back to a stock plenum. He's gone to a Precision 66, 67, I think, 67, 66, I'll have to double check. Uh, so we've gone to Precision, we've got twin gates, uh, so, you know, it's, it's a bit more of a, uh, I suppose, a more friendly setup for a manual street car in that we should be still capable of making the same same sort of power, but hopefully be making it a bit uh, nicer in the rev range and, and have a bit more streetable sort of combo. So the pipe work's now all been redone again from Ryan there at Elite Fabrications. As you can see, it's absolutely impeccable work. Um, easily the best, the best fabrication work I've ever laid eyes on from Ryan. And... Um, it's no exaggeration. The dude is an absolute wizard. So if you're looking for fab work on the sunny coast, definitely look at hitting him up. He's a very busy guy though, so be, expect to wait in line for a bit. So anyway, uh, I've been tasked with a retune with the changing of the setup. So uh, it's link ECU on this thing. So I just wanted to show off the car and show you some results. Uh, at the moment, it's got only just a single Warbro 460. It's all still dash six fuel lines. And we've also only got a single plate DCS clutch, which is only rated to about 550 horsepower. So at this stage, it's going to be the clutch and fuel system that's gonna hold this thing up. Otherwise, this thing's awesome. We've got H-beam rods, nine to one compression CP pistons, main studs, we've got uh, Camtech 272 cams, as well as a port and polished head. Uh, you know, everything is here for this motor to make really, really good power. Uh, so, you know, hopefully one day in the future we'll see Cody upgrade the clutch, upgrade the fuel system and come back for some E85 and we can really turn it up a bit. Uh, not going to go too in depth with everything. I just thought I'd want to show you off the car and we'll see how we, uh, we go today. All right, guys, we're back with the Supra. So I had to do a few little things to, to sort of set it up exactly how I wanted. Change the uh, boost control. It's got a GFB boost controller in it at the moment. I actually uh, repinned in the factory boost control and just pinch the solenoid, rewired it, and uh, so we've got ECU control boost now. So the boost is now controlled by our Link. Um, so this is running a Link plug-in G4 Plus. Uh, great ECU, it's been awesome. So had a few other issues. Uh, we had really, really low fuel pressure. Not sure what the go was with that, but the actual fuel pressure gauge on the regulator was broken, didn't work. So just stuck at 20 psi static. So I ended up changing all that, had to re, you know, redo fuel pressure and pretty much a complete remap from there. So. Um, that's where we're at at the moment. It's just about time now to start showing you some filming, some power runs on this thing. Uh, customer's request was to make the idle nice and lumpy, which I've done. Um, so we've got some nice lumpy idle now. Nice and lumpy, so it sounds cammed. So, no mistake in that, it's nice and lumpy, so 
We'll film some uh, power runs. You can see how this thing goes. It sounds awesome. It sounds amazing. So I had this tune pretty much all finished. The last thing I was doing was actually setting up all of the knock control and link. Um, and I was doing a few runs just to get my threshold and uh, my noise levels for the, for the knock control. And I managed to kill a coil pack. So unfortunately, even though the tune's done, now I've got to try and get hold of some coil packs to, um, to replace the, the one that obviously just got too hot. So it's a bit of a pain, but it's cars. It is what it is. Either way, the tune's gone really well. So we've ended up at 570 at the wheels at the treads um i'm stoked cody the owner he's pretty happy uh at this stage that's as far as i'm happy to push this clutch what we've ended up doing here is uh this is just on gate pressure so i haven't actually put any duty cycle into this thing so this is just what the gates are doing so i've just left the timing super super conservative uh just to try and i don't want to make any more power than that really is 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 what it's at so the options from there is essentially change the gate springs or just stay conservative with the timing and leave it where it is. So that's what we've ended up doing. Fingers crossed this clutch lasts and holds on for a little while at the very least. Obviously Cody does have plans to upgrade it very soon, but you know, I'd like for him to be able to actually enjoy the car for a little bit before he has to do that. But anyway, once the clutch is upgraded, there's plenty more room in this. There is, there is plenty left in it, plenty to go. I'm um, pretty excited for it to come back with a bigger fuel system and a, uh, a bigger clutch and and we can see what we can actually push out of this thing that's still on pump 98 as well this is an e85 or anything anyways when i go to replace the coil packs i'm just going to put a a nice colder heat range plug in it as well one range colder um the plugs that are in are probably just a little bit too hot for the power we're actually making out of this thing so um, that's going to be the end of the video because all that's left for me to do is change all that do a power run make sure it's all right but apart from that the tune's finished um, the knock control set up. I'm super happy with everything. I think Cody's super happy with everything. All I've got to do is just work on the cold start. Probably not tomorrow. I'm going to have to wait. It's annoying. I'm going to have to wait until I get the coil pack to do the cold start because there's no point in doing the cold start while it's missing on one cylinder because it's not going to be a very accurate representation of what it's doing for fueling or anything. So that's a real pain. But anyway, it's nice and choppy. Sounds good. Strong as. Hopefully this clutch holds together. Uh, and hopefully you'll see this car around a fair bit. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, guys, short and sweet video for this one. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you, bye. Wait up. We've had a bit of a development. Another one of those uh, paradigm shift moments and a new, another new experience. So while I was dynoing this thing, it was sort of revving out to about 7.2 and then it would just stop. And I had a look through the ECU. There was nothing in the ECU that was sort of limiting it. There was no, we weren't approaching the limiter. The limiter was set for 7.8. Um, but it was sort of just getting a 7.2 and just falling over, like falling off. I sort of had it in my head, maybe it was out of valve spring or something, because it does have some pretty big cams on it, and I'm not sure what the valve springs in it are. But uh, what we actually found when I checked is that we're approaching the speed limit of the dyno. So obviously with the factory um, turbo Supras, you got the V160, which is the six speed, uh, and one to one is fifth gear. So in fifth gear, we're actually reaching over 250 kilometers an hour, which is the limit of the roller speed for the dyno. So that's what's happening. So anyway, now I know that. Gonna have to dyno it in fourth, um, just to get a few, like the last bit of the tune, those last sort of few RPM. Um, yeah, I, I just thought that was where it was mechanically limited by something, but obviously it's not. It's actually the dyno limiting it. So uh, glad to have found that. So. That means when I get this coil pack sorted and I get it back on the dyno to finish up a few things, I will actually chuck it in fourth and do a full run of the full RPM, make sure everything's all good up top. So who knows, we may even make a little bit more power because without it falling off there, which is obviously now from the dyno road speed, it may, uh, may actually make it a little bit more. So anyway. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today is just another one of them short and sweet videos of another tune that I just want to show off the car a little bit. That's all it is. So. We've got here a beautiful SIL 80. It's still under construction, so it doesn't look the part at the moment, but uh, it's pretty exciting what this car actually is. I think you're gonna be pretty excited about it.
Alright, so as you can see, pretty exciting stuff, pretty exciting car. So, we've got it here, uh, still 80 with, uh, you know, wide body still 80 with a juicy little VVTi 2J. So, you guys may remember Matt from Nightworks Drifting and his old man uh, from cars that have been here before. The uh, purple 180 with the 1.5J drift car. Nice little wide body 1J or 1.5J 180. So, 1.5J 180SX. And the red FC RX-7 with the 1J, the street car. What got here is a forged bottom end 1J, stock head bolts uh, with 272 cams and a GT 3076.8. So this is Matt's latest creation. So this is just a stock BBTI 2JZ GTE. We've got a Mamba 3582 with, we believe, a 0.8. I'm pretty sure he said. It's been a little while since he dropped it off. I'll have to talk to him because I've been sick. Anyway, uh, Bosch Thousands, R35 coils from Golby's. Um, pretty much rounds out the combo. Just about all of these boys, the combos are very similar. They're usually just J's, 1000 cc injectors, R35 coils, and we're good to go. So. Pretty exciting. Uh, he's got in this for gearbox, we've got a TR6060, which I actually sold to Matt um, at the end of last year. So uh, TR6060, which I actually had earmarked for my Turbo LS Crusader, which I ended up selling because I didn't re really need it and I needed the money at the time. So Matt got that. So we've got nice six speed TR6060, 2J VVTi in this uh, lovely wide body SIL80 on the way. So. Like I said, still in the build, still got a bit to go. Uh, from here, it's gonna go to paint and all the rest of the things, but you know, it's gonna be a pretty exciting car. So anyway, we'll get into uh, seeing what we can make out of this. It's a bog stock motor as far as I'm aware, which means uh, stock head bolts. So I'd be pretty happy out of this combo at around 450 at the wheels. I'd be stoked with that. Um, and that's probably as far as I'd like to push uh, stock head bolts. Although I know I've heard a lot of people say that they're good for up to, you know, sort of close to 500. Um, so we'll see how we go. I'm just not too interested in finding out where their limits are on this thing today. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll do some tuning. I'll we'll get some power runs in and we'll see what we can do with it. Forgot to mention also, we've got Link running the show. So Link ECU controlling everything. So let's get in and see what we can do. All right guys. So we had some issues with this thing. Um, I, I, Trying to, I'm starting to try and avoid filming all of the issues we have with all of these tunes because I think it's what's making this content sort of somewhat stale. Um, but anyway, regardless, I ended up having Matt and actually Cody out um, because we had some issues with the Supra as well, which I didn't film in that video. But at this stage, I'm going to smash these two videos together and do one video on both cars. So um, the Supra, we actually dropped a coil pack. It killed a coil pack. So Cody and Matt are good friends. So they came out on the weekend, brought out a spare set of coil packs for the Supra and Matt fixed a few issues we had with this. So we were having a heap of voltage issues, which was really weird. Voltage was staying consistent at the battery and at the alternator, so it was charging. But voltage at the ECU and the injectors and the fuel pump and everything was dropping down to like nine volts right in the top end. So obviously we couldn't tune like that um, because then you're just trusting the injector data being absolutely perfect for it to be normal when it comes back up to regular voltage. So uh, that wasn't gonna fly. So we had Matt out, fix a few issues, um, do a little bit of wiring, fix up and this thing, it's, it's still doing some weird stuff. It's still um, at idle, it keeps going lean and rich, just in and out, it's, it's doing some weird stuff. It's, it's not really finished. The wiring needs some looking at. As you can see, obviously the car's not finished. It was sort of try and get it here and get it tuned um, at this point before, you know, any further. But anyway, regardless, I want this thing to come back once it's finished off properly, just to run it up and do a health check, make sure our voltage and everything, everything's right. Um, and the tune is, is still spot on once it's had everything changed. So uh, I totally forgot to film any power runs of this today. My apologies, just completely slipped my mind, but we ended up at 434 um, at 18 PSI. Uh, at that point, we are out of duty cycle. So 
not a bad result. Uh, again, I didn't, we didn't tune it on the ragged edge because of some of the weird stuff this thing's doing with fueling, which I think is still to do with voltage. Um, so the plan was to go 20 pound and hopefully make about 450, which I reckon we will easily achieve. However, at 18 pound, we're out of duty cycle on the gate. Uh, um, so it just, it doesn't mean we can't get there. It just means we have to re-plumb uh, how the actual Mac valve is, is plumbed up. Um, so a bit of a re-plumb on the Mac valve and we'll, we will get 20 pound. However, given this car still needs some finishing off and I want it back here after that anyway, decided to call it that for today. 434 is a good result for now for 18 pound. And when it comes back after it's completely finished off, we'll, uh, we'll jam a few more PSI into it and uh, go for our 450, which again, easily achievable. So. Um, that's the 180 for now. Hopefully when it comes back as well, it's uh, sort of finished off a bit more cosmetically because I reckon this is going to be a beautiful looking car once it's finished. Matt's done a really good job. Uh, so anyway, that's where this is for now. And instead of making two really short videos, I decided to jam this in with the Supra. So the Supra, as you saw, we made 570. Um, and the last thing we found out was that we're actually out of road speed on the dyno. So uh, I'm going to do, when I get that back on the rollers with now, with the new core packs in it, uh, gonna actually dyno it in fourth, just to make sure we've got that last few hundred RPM spot on as well. Don't wanna leave that on the table. Uh, and then the Super will be done as well. So that's these two cars sorted. Both pretty good results. Pretty happy with both. Anyway guys, sorry for not filming any power runs, but it sounds very similar to the non vvti 2 j Cody's. It does sound very similar. Um, just a little bit less turbo whistle. All right guys, so that's this thing all um, cleaned up, which is awesome. So they're very, very happy with this thing. This is. Probably one of the most exciting cars I've got to tune to date, and it's been awesome. So, stoked with this thing. I'm so, so excited for this thing to come back with a better clutch, a better fuel system, and some E85. Um, these injectors, they do a little bit of funny things, and from what I've been looking at online, it looks like a lot of people have had the same issue with these same injectors. They are Bosch 1600s, but they're not the stainless steel ones. They're the really, really old school Bosch 1600s, and apparently a lot of people had a lot of dramas with um, fuel temperature is the main thing uh, with the injectors doing some funny stuff. So anyway, I've, I've worked to the best of my ability. This thing is going to be an absolute monster. Um, and yeah, that 570 wheel, I uh, ran it up in fourth. Um, those last few under RPM are fine. Uh, everything's great. So very happy with this car. Uh, pretty much the last thing to do with this thing, because it is a street car, is just take it for a quick drive on the street, just to make sure everything's perfect. Um, I know there are some people that get up in arms about that, but when you're tuning a street car, um, it's pretty much impossible. Like there's, there's a lot of things a dyno can't simulate. So it's pretty important, particularly with automatics as well, to go for a quick street drive just to make sure everything's fine. So get this thing off the dyno. I might bring you along with me for this street drive because I know so many people all the time really, really want to be in the car for street drives. A lot of people want to see it. Um, obviously we don't do anything crazy. We just load it up in a few gears, make sure nothing's leaning out or doing anything funny in certain gears or anything like that. Um, and that's all it's about, it's just making sure the tune is consistent across all areas of load across the map, you know, on something like the street. So we'll go do that. All right, hopefully this angle's all right, guys. Sort of just tossed it in. Got Rex coming for a spin as well. One of the main things I want to keep an eye on for this is um, my knock levels for setting the knock retard. All of the knock control. This thing just sounds off its head. Stab there. Let's see. I don't want to lay them after readjusting. 
Ross. They're geared and with the six speed, these things must just be ridiculously fast. I suppose the Twilight's got a 320k an hour speedo. Yeah. Guys, so there you go. Thing is strong as in all gears, sail gears, but really the way these things are geared and set up, um, you pretty much can't even touch fourth, fifth, or sixth on the street because you're getting ridiculously fast. So these cars, just yeah, the way they geared, the way the gearbox is with six gears and stuff like that, they're just absolutely outrageously fast cars. Um, like you saw on the dyno, we we're approaching the speed limit of the the dyno at 250k an hour at the top of fifth gear. There's still another gear to go. Um, so that it's just crazy. It's insane to me. So anyway, uh, feels great. Um, it was good. We were able to get that knock threshold and the knock um, the knock setup on the link uh, just that little bit closer. So super happy with how this thing's leaving. Um, I'm stoked. We did get a little bit of just a raw fuel smell as we were driving along. Uh, we had a look over the car. We can't see any obvious leaks. Uh, we've had a look around the boot. It smells like it seems to be coming more so from the back of the car here. Um, but I'm just going to put that down to, you know, I've been over it, can't find any obvious leaks. So I'm just going to put it down to maybe the fact that there's no carbon canister or something else. Um, either way, I'll tell Cody to keep an eye on that. I'm sure he's aware of it. But uh, yeah, a few little, um, you know, a few little things that I'll just ask Cody to do before it comes back for its new turn on E85 with the bigger fuel system and stuff. A few little extra sensors I'd like to put in it. I would like to put, um, you know, it's got an Innovate AFR there. I would like to actually wire the output into the link so that we have um you know actual o2 control in the link a few things like that but overall stoked with this thing very happy with it so it's going to be an absolute monster it's going to be a lot of fun um and yeah sorry the guys that this video was a bit of a flop as far as the the silady and stuff went not filming any power runs or anything with that um but these two cars are just two cars i really wanted to show you because they are both cars that you should be seeing quite a bit more of on the channel so now that this car is actually sort of done and running, I'm going to be doing my best to try and convince Cody to, to take it out <laughs> a bit more, like roll racing and stuff like that. I'm trying to convince him to go power play in February next month, um, or next week actually. Ooh. So I'm trying to convince him to take it down to power play so he can have some fun and, and go and do some hot laps and stuff. So very cool car. I really do appreciate this car. It's really nice. Anyway, I'll be sure to get some footage of this lady when it comes back of some actual power runs. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to both of these cars coming back, um, hopefully for a bit more pepper. But yeah, yesterday, among that wiring issues, we had other issues as well with the, the Sil 80. We actually blew out a turbo gasket as well and had to replace that, um, which actually burnt through the turbo return. So we had to fix that as well. Lucky Matt came out to sort out them wiring issues because he was actually here for all day to you know, fix the car as we needed it as well. So 
it's good. It doesn't cost him anything because it doesn't cost me any time because he did all the, all the work. So uh, that worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, try and get away from filming everything just because I know that there's not a lot of value in it really. So trying to make shorter videos like this, short and sweet, uh, of just these sorts of cars that I really want to show off that um, you will see more of. So yeah, thanks for watching. As always, guys, hope you've enjoyed this little 2J Saga video. <laughs> pretty stoked. I will actually mention as well, um, Matt, obviously, as you've seen, Nightworks Drifting, they do a lot of J stuff. Most of the, all the cars that have come here from them have been J's. Uh, as part of payment for doing that little, uh, that tune and stuff, and probably for another tune, part payment, um, they did swing me this thing. So, got here 1J GTE short block. Bores are a little bit scored up, but not too bad. Um, should get away with a one mil overbore. Uh, the pistons are all pretty wrecked, but that's fine. Um, probably could leave the balls if I really wanted to, but we'll see what happens when it comes to, to doing this. So, how this came about is you all know that we had been planning to do a 1.5J for Rex's VK, uh, and how that came about was we actually bought a 2J GE block, and we had sold Rex's, the other 1J GTE bottom end, we'd sold this to one of our, or one of Rex's mates, he sold that, kept the 1J head, and we actually picked up a 1J, uh, 2J GE, non vbti bottom end for a pretty good price and the plan was hey we'll do a 1.5 and the reason was we already had an ecu and loom for a 1j and we already had a uh, six boost manifold for a 1j so in the meantime we actually ended up selling that ecu and loom to a mate who actually needed it uh, for his car he needed a cheap one and we had decided that we probably want something better for the vk when the time came anyway also then we ended up doing todd's 1.5j and as you guys know i sent a block down that todd supplied it ended up having cracks in the deck and we thought it wasn't a very good idea to use that block for Todd's very high, you know, high tier, um, expensive build for big horsepower. So we figured we'll keep the one with the cracked deck for our 1.5J, considering we had planned to just go stock bottom end anyway, which means we'd be limited to around that 700 horsepower. And we're confident that the, the hairline cracks in the deck wouldn't be a problem. Not only that, but if it's our motor, we understand the risk we're taking, so it sort of works for us. But you can't, we couldn't go using that block for Todd's, you know, building a motor for a customer that we want to be able to rate to over a thousand horsepower. We can't use a block with the hairline fractures. So we ended up with that block, um, kept a good rotating assembly that came out of it, ready to go stock bottom end in that thing. Um, but out of doing Todd's motor, because he's going 1.5J, we ended up with the 2J GE head. So we've got here just a 2J GE head. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, these heads, uh, they, they flow much better than a 1J head, essentially. You've got bigger exhaust ports, bigger, um, yeah, bigger exhaust ports. You've got higher ports on the head, which means you get a better straighter shot at the back of the valve. They just flow way better than a 1J head. So what Rex decided is because we, we already sold the Lumen ECU, all we were really using the 1J head for is because we already had the manifold. So Rex decided for the case of just having to buy a new manifold for a GE head, he'd rather just do a full 2J GE and um, start from there because you end up with a better head at the start of it anyway. And so we decided with the VK instead of going 1.5, it's just going full 2J GE. So then we were left with a 1J head that sort of had no home. And uh, I already had, we already have a spare 1J rotating assembly, spare crank rods and pistons uh, from doing MAF garage, um, for doing MAFs. 1J for the Cressida. We ended up with sort of another set of rods and pistons here that um, I'm not sure if he wants, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind if we wanted them. So we'd end up with two sets of rods and pistons. We've still got one good crank and uh, a head and a manifold. And I thought, well, all I really need is a 1J block and we've got enough parts to put together a 1J GTE for myself or something. So uh, I ended up heading up Matt because I know he does a lot of J stuff. And yeah, he ended up, we've got this block here. So. Given the way the bores are, it may end up having to be a rods and pistons sort of build, um, just because we may have to bore the block, we might not get away with doing a stock rotating assembly, which is a bit of, an, a, bit of a pain, it uh, means more cost, but at the end of the day, I don't even know what I'm using it for yet, it's sort of just there for uh, a later date. So anyway, that's my little ramble for the end of this video, is uh, I've ended up with enough parts that we can build uh, not only Rex, a 2J GE for the VK, which we're gonna boost and hopefully make, you know, close to 700 as we can, uh, and then after that, we've got myself a 1J GTE, which at this stage, I'm actually considering building and putting in the 626 because the 626 weighs just a touch under a thousand kilos, just under a ton. It's about the same weight as a KE70. It's about the same size as a KE70. Uh, so legally, I can actually get a turboed 1J 
registered in that thing. And being as light as it is, if we set that car up pretty well with a, like a rods and pistons 1J, and the other thing is the cams that come in that head um, are pretty shot, so we're gonna need cams anyway. So that's a good excuse to buy big cams. So big cam to forge 1J, we're looking at, you know, probably 600 horsepower, the wheels. So you imagine a uh, one ton car, 600 horsepower at the wheels, auto, um, be very, very competitive car for things like roll racing and drag challenge and stuff. So that may ha happen uh, later on in the future after I've had fun with all my Barrett projects I wanna do this year, but anyway. That's enough babbling, that's my little story for the afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed this little J video. Um, and we're looking forward to doing some J's of our own eventually, so anyway. I'm gonna try and convince Cody to go to Powerplay. If that's the case, you'll be seeing this car at Powerplay in a video very soon. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. As always, leave a comment, smash like, smash subscribe if you haven't already. Head to the store, buy yourself some merch if you'd like. Uh, head to the other store and buy yourself some parts if you'd like. And uh, yeah, anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out, see you bye guys.